Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a condensed build version of a Skymaster A10 in black snake schemes. A little bit of a different orientation and layup for this video. We're putting this plane together with some outstanding equipment. If you haven't seen what's in the uh, going in this aircraft, watch the unboxing video, but let's dive in to a condensed build on the Skymaster A10. All right guys, so we just finished unboxing the Skymaster A10. We got it all up on the table, got pretty much everything open up and ready to go. Uh, we've got our Revic wing bags. We're gonna install our wings and surfaces and the Revic wing bags to protect them. And let's start off with burning in our servos. So step number one in the any build series is to burn in our servos. So we've done that on all of our servos through the jetty box. They've all gone through 990 cycles. We're also going to get our receivers and central boxes all updated and set up. And we've pulled everything out of the uh, packages, boxes and everything and kind of laid some initial things out. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna work on is getting our scale turbo fans installed in the aircraft. And what we're gonna do first here is sand out the perimeter of the turbo fan. So we've got a nice glue surface to the inside. Okay, so we won't be using the stock tank hardware. This is something I don't generally use on any of the Skymaster kits, but we will be using uh, upgraded tank hardware. So we've got some bungs that we need to uh, glue in place and some new vent fittings that we need to glue in place. So while we have some epoxy mixed up, we will drill our holes and get these installed in the tanks. All right, so with our tanks gluing and resting, we are moving on to the rear surfaces. So like general, we are going to work our way from the back forward in the aircraft. So starting off, we are gonna to go to our elevators, rudders, and get that stuff set up. Now, while we're going through the plane, we're also thinking about lighting setups as well too. So we've got a full Unilight package for this aircraft, and we are going to get the lights installed in the various locations. Okay, so we've got the fuselage up on the workbench here. Now we are going to be running our light system at 12 volts. That's one of the beauties with the Unilight system is in general, you can run them with two different voltages. You just have to install the extra capacitor in the system. So we're gonna do that for the entire system. Now, part of the point of doing that is it keeps the battery layout very simple on this aircraft. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have four three cell LiPo batteries. They're all gonna be identical and they're gonna power the entire system on the aircraft. So you'll have uh, one uh, for each of the turbines. Those are gonna be paired off to run the compressor and the lighting system. And then you're gonna have two that power the receiver setup. And it's just a super simple system and it's gonna work absolutely awesome. So nice, simple battery solution for this aircraft. So we've got our output set up or plug-in or position set up for the light and that is ready to install. Now, before we install it, we want to include or install our extra resistor into the system to make sure that it's compatible with 3S LiPo. So we'll get that done and then we will get this glued into place. Okay, so we've got our elevator servos installed in the horizontal stab and we have some rough slots installed. Ended up using one and a half inch arms, the uh, heavy duty MKS arms. First thing we need to do is transfer our straight line onto our elevator surface, which we've done. And that's the inner line here. Then I've gone ahead and added two more lines. There's gonna be a clevis used on this end and a ball joint used on this end. The ball joint makes the most amount of uh, sense with this very thick arm that's already pre-drilled and our clevis on our single control arm, which is carbon on this end, makes the most amount of sense, but we, we want and need a nice straight line. All right, so we've got all of our marks made and our hardware figured out for the elevators. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our Dremel and we are going to cut slots for our carbon arms and get those glued in. 
Okay, so we got our carbon horns installed. They are all done. We're gonna set this aside now and let it rest. The reason we don't wanna to touch it is because we wanna make sure those carbon horns are glued in at the right angle. So we won't worry about our arms or actuating arms right now. We're gonna move on to our vertical stabs. Okay, so we've got our vertical stabs on the table here and we were having them rest in our Revit covers. So what we need to do is we need to work on our servo mounting linkage and uh, control surface carbon horn mounting as well. So we're using the same horn that we used on the elevator or horizontal stab. So those get mounted in this location. But step number one is we need to figure out our servo mounting and cover plates and geometries. So the servos we're using in the rudders of this aircraft is the MKS HV747 servos. Great little servo, nice and easy to mount in this location and tons of power. So one of the considerations is the horn height. You need to be very careful with the amount of horn height you have because your cover plate only allows a very uh, specific location for your linkage. So we'll keep all that in consideration while we're putting this together. And we've got our servos mounted on our vertical stabs and there is the servo right there. So the important things here is that everything lines up and our distance is similar between the two uh, within a millimeter. And this is basically ready to do our control horns on the rudder surfaces. So basically the, uh, the, the scale detail right here lines up with your lines. So um, I have marked out on this one where we want to add our holes for our horns. Okay, so we're ready to glue our horns in. We've prepped the opening and we've also roughened up the surfaces of the horns and we're gonna mix up some Hisol 9462 and get that installed and obviously making sure that we're nice and centered, level, plumb, square. So rudders are done, the horns are installed. We're just waiting for the glue to cure. And we've also run the wiring from the back section forward and we have put a 12 pin ash lock connector on the back end and that is going to be the main connection between the tail section and the fuselage. So one of the things that you're really focusing on here is keeping the rudder arm and servo arm and everything as low as possible because that way the cover plate works. The cover plate doesn't allow much room at all but you can minimize the amount of uh, space that you take up by drilling your hole in an appropriate location. So if we use the stock mounting hole on these carbon arms that is going to put that way out and we will basically have to get rid of all of our channel there. So what we want to do is we want to get this moving the correct amount like that and then line up our arm with a position on the carbon arm which is going to give us the lowest possible position in the system. So if we can run this all the way down to the base like that and still get our required travel, then everything should work well with the cover plate. Okay, so we've gone to our measure measured location there. We've drilled a hole and just doing some tests and it works out perfect. So we get the required amount of movement on the one direction and then the other direction is going to make it so we only have to trim off just a little bit of the uh, cover plate, which is gonna work out good. So we've got our wire shortened up here coming through the vertical stab, and we have switched those to the ash lock connectors. This also allows us to plug in the connector into the radio system and be able to center those servos and set up our surface. Okay, so we've got our cover installed. Next thing we're gonna do is take our Dremel and sand down the carbon horn to look like that. Okay, so we're gonna get some color match paint done up here. This is kind of a funky color black, kind of a gray black, but uh, we're gonna get some done up so we can cover all of our screw heads on, a, on the other surfaces as well. And then we can also paint our uh, control clevises, horns, uh, high saw, glues, all that stuff as well. Okay, so vertical stabs are complete. So we got our connectors done for our rudder connection. 
uh, we've put a little bit of black electrical tape around the wire and put a little bit of CA about six inches in. And what that allows uh, this to do is the wire doesn't fall back in, but we also can, when we connect the rudder, the wires can sit inside the horizontal stab. So that part's done. Rudders are done. We've also installed a grommet on our cover plate here, and this is where all four of our wires are going to come out of the horizontal stab. And that is going to be installed with an ash lock connector going to the connection at the fuse. Now what I'll do in this case is just to keep our wiring simple. I always work left to right. So this is gonna be surface one, two, three, and four. So on those wires going forward, I've marked them one, two, three, and four. So I will know what ends go on the wires in the fuselage. So our cover plate is installed. We've got our wires coming through in our ash lock connector, and that is all complete. We just put a uh, eight millimeter grommet through there and she looks good. So basically the tail section now is all 100% complete. We've got our horizontal stabs complete, verticals complete. Next thing we need to, need to do is over there, our engine pods. So while we're here and before we put the tail section aside, I'm gonna connect the vertical stabs to the elevator and get that all set up. So we've got our ash lock connector connected. Our cover plate is off of the end and we're just going to bolt this onto the horizontal stab. Now we're not gonna use Loctite because when we ship this plane, it's probably gonna be disassembled. But if you're setting it up for a permanent solution or assembly, I would Loctite those, uh, those fasteners. All right, so with the tail section done, we're moving on to the engine pods. And what we're gonna start off with is sanding out the uh, the front section there and the point of sanding that out is so we can put our filler in and we can uh, make this a nice smooth transition so this is all going to get repainted on the intake side so not worrying about any uh, any fi existing finish on there and then it'll all get painted gray so we mixed up some polyester filler and did the intakes of both of the engine pods. So while we're waiting for our polyester filler to cure, we are going to move on to our tanks. Now our tank fittings have all been uh, completed and glued as previously. Next thing we need to do is we need to glue in our nipples with red Loctite. So that's all you wanna use in this case is some red Loctite on the nipples. And once that's done, we can rinse out these tanks and leak test them. So when I clean out my tanks, I like to use isopropyl alcohol, 99%, and I will dump about half of a bottle, so about 500 milliliters in a tank, and rinse it out, and then dump the remaining in, and rinse it out again. Nice thing about alcohol is you can just dump it into the garbage, it evaporates from inside the tank. Nice, simple, clean, easy cleanup. So because we're using uh, 140 size engines, we're gonna use the stock hardware on this entire tank setup. It's all sized appropriately for that size tank. So one thing we wanna do is we wanna make the fuel system as even as possible. It doesn't really matter because you have two separate fuel systems in this aircraft, but it always is helpful. So we'll start off attaching our fuel bungs to a piece of tubing. We're gonna have a rigid piece of tubing inside the middle of the entire uh, pickup system and what we're going to do is we are going to add a little bit of solder to our stiff lines that go in the middle. So while we're assembling the tank fittings the solder is not there to seal anything it's just there to prevent the line from pulling off. Our actual seal is provided by the tubing sitting against the brass line and our safety wire provides a nice tight seal. Okay, and in a situation like this where you don't have good access to the nipple to be able to tie wire the end onto the nipple, what you can do is you can install a little piece of fuel tubing over top of your pickup tubing. And with a nice barb like this, that's going to hold the tubing on very nicely.
So with our tanks cleaned out, our bung fittings or fuel fittings all complete, it's time to install them. Now these fittings come with a little bit of grease on them. That grease has been removed with our rubbing alcohol. So we'll put a couple drops of silicone lube on the O-ring here. You don't want to use any Loctite or anything to fasten the threads onto the fittings. Uh, you just want to use the rubber seal. So we're going to get a drop or so installed, install these guys into the tanks, and then we'll pressure test them. So pressure testing tanks, you really don't have to put much in there. You're just using what comes out of your mouth. So we've got one end capped off. We've got one end open with our forceps here, and we will blow into this. Pressurize the tank and seal it off. So if we come back in a couple hours and these things are still holding pressure, then we know that they are good to go. So here's a before shot, before any sanding and just after filling and an after shot. So this is ready for paint. We've sanded this down with 120 to get rid of all of our filler. And then it came in and smoothed everything out with 400 grit sandpaper while wet sanding everything. Okay, so we've got our intakes painted, just waiting for the paint to cure and we will put some clear coat on top of that but looks good. We got the aircraft back end up on the stand here. Just put the tanks in there to do some planning, put the pods on the rear part of the fuselage and reinstalled our turbo fans. Those look good. I like the blue color on there. That's pretty cool looking and uh, put the rails in. So the rails just slide in place and the turbine holds them in place. You want to keep the rails removable just in case you need to pull the pipes out or the turbo fan needs to come out, which really would be a disaster because that's glued in place. But uh, there's no reason to, to glue the, uh, the rails in because they keyhole or, or slot in and then the engine holds them in place. So the Swiwin 140s that are going in this aircraft are just such a perfect size for this aircraft. Great sized little engines for this, uh, this A10 and uh, yeah, it just looks really good. And they're just, this is the exact same engine we've put in our previous one and it just worked out perfect. So. Um, we're gonna get the uh, exhaust cones and the mounting brackets and everything fit first. That's step number one. And then we'll work on engines here as well. All right, so a couple important things with engine mounting. Number one, the pipe itself has a bit of a weird shape to it. So what you wanna do is the seam on the pipe you wanna have towards the top. Now you gotta remember that when you're looking at this uh, engine pod, the rails are up and down. So we're gonna have to turn our turbine so the fuel is at 12 o'clock because right now it would be at about three o'clock designed for this type of installation right there. So we've got to turn the turbine, rotate it 90 degrees. We uh, have the pipe installed here. The manual tells you to put silicone in between the pipe and the mount. Uh, I prefer to hard mount that with some servo mounting screws. So that's done. And this is now going to get bolted onto the rails. Now there is a, a little bit of movement side to side on the pipe and the mount. So what I do is get this centered up and down is fairly straightforward because it only fits and then just get it centered left and right um, on the mount. So we'll get our pipe installed now and then we'll work on bolting in the turbines. All right, so airplane is sitting on its belly and we pulled the tanks back out. We wanna check and make sure they still hold air. These have been sitting for about four hours now. There we go, lots of pressure in there. I can still feel that it was pressurized. So even with this one as well, I know that it's, uh, it's gonna be good, but let's confirm. There we go. So tank sat for about four or five hours. We know they're good. Now we can start working on our layout right here. So there's a couple things we want to think about before we put the tanks in. Number one, how are we laying things out in this area? I'm going to put the ECUs here. And the reason I'm putting them here is to split the difference in the length. So we've got a wire that's going to come to each engine pod, which is good. And then we've got a wire that's going to go to the fuel pumps, which will be kind of in this area in the fuselage. So that splits the wiring nicely. And uh, then we'll have our on off valves in this area right here. So we drilled a hole in the former work here. We put a 5 8 pass through. These are available on my website. And this is where all of our lines and everything are going to go through and route towards the turbines in the back. 
So we've got our mount sorted out for our main plate. We've got our main plate sorted out. That's gonna get painted. And while we are getting ready to paint things, we wanna make our battery tray for the front. So I've made this out of uh, whatever that is, one eighth inch ply, uh, aircraft ply, so it's nice and strong. And uh, basically put this together to very securely hold three or four uh, big batteries. So this is gonna be our battery setup on this aircraft. Uh, we've got our two three cell LiPos, our two two cell LiPos, but those two two cell LiPos have Velcro on them and they're gonna be two three cell LiPos. So anyways, got lots of room there for batteries and uh, we're going to get this spot glued in place with CA and then we will probably use some aero epoxy on there and then we'll be able to paint this front tray. So we've got all of our trays sorted out here. This is our front tray, this is our rear tray, and this is a lower tray. So those are all gonna get painted. We've got our little uh, mini paint booth, AKA cardboard box set up and we'll get those painted in primer gray. So in order to facilitate easy engine removal, we wanna have an engine connection here and also a fuel connector there. So we're making up a couple bulkhead fittings here. So this is gonna have a short little lead going from here to the engine, and of course from here to the engine as well for the fuel supply. Now these are gonna get installed from the back side. And what happens is the excess just goes in this area right here when the engine pod gets installed. So we're making up both of these guys and we will get them glued in from the back side and both of those lines run forward through our grommet right there. All right, and there's our plugins there, our through fittings installed on both sides of the fuselage and that is perfect. So now we've got a nice little extension that's going to the turbine and of course our fuel supply which goes to the turbines as well. All right guys, we've got a package today from RC CG machine. We're gonna open this up, excited. I have a feeling I know what's in here, but we'll see. Oh yeah. What is this, might you ask? This is our extension kit for our CG machine. So when you get to massive size planes, uh, this thing is going to be very handy. And uh, with some of these planes we've got coming like the F-14 XL and these other huge monsters that we have, this thing is going to be critical. If you're interested in the best balancing tool out there, rccgmachine.com. All right guys, and that's gonna wrap up video number one in the build series of the Skymaster Black Snakes. A10. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video layout. We did it a little bit different like I mentioned. We got a lot done in this video. Tail sections back there. Uh, the rear portion of the plane is almost complete. Next video we are going to finish off some of the little details we have back here and then we're going to move into the wings. The wings are a huge portion of this plane. And while we're working on the wings, we're gonna continue working on some other little bits and bites like we've done so far. So a couple things for you. Number one, number one, uh, don't forget to check out channel membership. Channel membership uh, this year is very exciting. Welcome to 2024 with channel membership. We've got so many cool planes. And if you are a channel member, you get to see the videos weeks before everybody else gets to see them or non-channel members. So the F-14 XL, we're gonna be starting this plane very soon. If you're a channel member, you're gonna to get to see the unboxing video. You're going to get to see all the build videos one to two weeks before any of the non-channel members get to see those videos and everything else we do. So I think that's a pretty cool perk. The response so far has been really positive from all the channel members and thank you to channel members for being a channel member because it is a paid service and I do appreciate it. And in December, we gave away a free trusty bent screwdriver no matter where you were in the world to our channel members. So that was a huge positive. And you know, if you paid 20 bucks to be a channel member, well, it basically just 
cost me 60 if you're in Australia to send you a trusty bent screwdriver. So hopefully you guys feel like that's paying you back. Last thing I'll tell you about is well, actually two things. Lighter side of RC After Dark. The After Dark is our live stream channel. We, it's a completely separate channel. We live stream every two weeks, usually Saturday evenings here from the shop for about two hours. Uh, it's a fun time. You get to see behind the scenes what's going on. And a lot of times if you tune into those live streams, you are getting again content and views of what's going on before our videos are actually released by usually a couple weeks. And the final thing, thanks for listening all the way through, is our other channel, which uh, me and my friend Anthony have started. It's our podcast channel, the RC Air Experience. The RC Air Experience, I think we've got maybe six podcasts on there already and uh, just some great people in the industry and the hobby and uh, lots more to come. So definitely check that out. There's links to all those things down below. Thank you guys for watching the A10 build series, the condensed build series, and we'll see you in the next video.